Hi there, my name is Dr. Phil Good and welcome to the beautiful island of Ibiza. Now Head Candy have asked me to introduce this video and it's all about the wonderful and amazing work that Care for Cats do on this island. Now I've lived here for seven years and as a DJ and a cat lover it's pretty cool to be involved. Many people think that Ibiza is all about thumping music and the hedonistic parties. And they may be right but there are some stories that need to be told and this story is all about the cats of Ibiza. Since 2000, Care for Cats have neutered over 25,000 cats and helped thousands of sick and injured monks along the way. Before their arrival, the cats of Ibiza were left to their own. They were left to die on the streets and in the countryside. Year after year, thousands of kittens were born to die of starvation, disease and cruelty. Their mission is to trap and to neuter and to release back into the wild as many stray cats as possible. They have a small but growing network of Ibiza based volunteers and hopefully this video will show you what they can do. Um, Mark Doyle from Head Candy. Um, we're doing something different from discos and flamingos and swimming pools and so yes, I know, uh, and swimming pools and so forth. Uh, we've come up to see Sarah McKeith. Uh, she regularly fosters kittens, bottle feeds them. Um, they would not survive without her. Um, and she's just one of the people that work for Care for Cats, um, who we are just doing a little bit of a thing on to show what's going on at the moment in Ibiza. Obviously with COVID-19, there's lots of these little fellas. Um, not being looked after and they're not being fed um, and it's people like Care for Cats that come out and actually do this self-funded um, and we'd just like to try and help and I think you should as well so we're going to hear from Sarah we're going to talk to the other ladies from Care for Cats as well um, see some other things as well around the island um, I might just stay here forever so look. <laughs> So I went out to Goa to do something life-changing and um, um, uh, yeah, started working at an animal rescue place out there um, I've given some kittens to bottle feed them, I can't do this, I only know dogs and then um, yeah, I came back and then just got in touch with Care for Cats and just said, listen, do you want me to do this? So I spend my winters out in Goa and I run a sterilisation, vaccination and feeding programme uh, in South Goa and then do this when I come back here. I mean, it is really rewarding, but it is really, really, it, it is hard and it's hard. It, it doesn't matter whether they've been with you an hour um, or, or a month or two months or however long. As soon as you've put a bottle or as soon as you've, you've handled them, you've got some sort of bond and some sort of relationship with them. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is incredibly hard. So I tend to give them the bottle. Um, and then, so obviously this is to make them pee and poo. Yeah. So I do it before I feed them, yeah. um, just so they've got an empty stomach. <laughs> then I'll do it after a feed. Then I'll switch them, and then I'll do it again. So when you've only got two, it's fine. But yeah. as I said, I had nine on the bottle. And when they're newborn, it's literally um, every hour. Yeah. So luckily I have a bit of insomnia. But come here, cow down. It's, I mean, there's obviously not an easy, quick solution but what filming this now if you could say one thing to people that um, watch more this. foster homes do you know what for me um, there's a lot of people like I'm a florist I have no work so yeah I live in a really nice place I don't know whether I'll be living in this place next year because I rely on weddings events and things like that a bit like yourself yeah. kind of thing so you know and it's really affected it um, so for me it's people obviously bottle feeding to me, it's quite, it is quite easy, um, or syringing or whatever ever else we do it. Um, but when they get to this age, now I've weaned them, to have a crate in your, in your home isn't that hard. 
and for somebody to actually kind of take them to the next step, which is when obviously eight weeks and plus, then they can go first vaccination, then they can go up for adoption. Right then, well this is uh, a little bit different from what we normally do, it's usually me or somebody else um, standing behind some decks playing new music, but <laughs> we thought uh, why not break up all of our uh, event stuff uh, with um, meeting some people, especially on Ibiza, um, that absolutely contribute to the island um, and maybe do things that you don't think about when you come over here and you do your nightclubs um, and you're doing your bars and things like that. There is actually a whole ecosystem of people here uh, that are doing things that you might not think about. One of them, and it's very, very close to my heart as a bit of a cat lover, um, is something that I've been following on Facebook and and could not help but want to get involved when we came out here and find some way of raising awareness. Um, it's a lady from Care for Cats. And Care for Cats are based on Ibiza. Um, I'll let, you, let the ladies tell you exactly what they do, but this is Emma and Marianne. Hello. Um, Hello. And you are Care for Cats, along with a number of other volunteers on the island. Yeah. Um, can you tell me what is Care for Cats? What the charity does is basically um, sterilises all the stray cats. Um, we've probably over the 21 years sterilised about 25,000 cats, which is uh, an incredible number. Recently though, we've found the demand uh, all year has been tremendous and we couldn't keep on top of the, the numbers of kittens being born to, on the street. And so we have volunteers based on the island that go out trapping in their spare time. Um, everywhere from fancy villas to hotels, by the bins, everywhere in Ibiza. You may not see them, but everywhere in Ibiza there's, there's stray cats. And also we uh, are very much involved with rescuing and homing as many as we can. And also people call us now for emergencies, cats hit by cars. Hi, oh, yeah, emergencies are every single day. Um, all sorts of things from, I've just found a kitten in my car bonnet, to there's a cat hit by a car, to cat drooling, can't eat, um, cat limping on three legs, you name it, anything cat related I get phone calls about. Um, we try our best to help them all. It's difficult because we don't have many foster homes, we don't have enough volunteers, we don't have enough money, but we do everything we can to help them. That's why we need more help from the public with money, and we need more help from people here to foster and volunteer to help us. I mean, we tend to think back at home, you know, that we have RSPCA and we have so lucky. Green and we have... Is there anything like that over here? So Nothing. everything is, is pretty much developed and done by individuals like yourself Correct. who come in and decide to take this on Correct. themselves. Yes. And we don't get any funding from the government. When we go and trap, we've got to use our own cars, our own fuel, um, and normally it can take two, three visits to get the whole colony done. And yeah, it's all it's all down to money that, that is raised um, by Angela, by writing to trusts and, and the public's donations. Um, yeah, and it's and a I real struggle. What have been the challenges of what this year has it. given us, obviously, with COVID? Yeah, it has been a lot worse because we haven't been able to neuter uh, sort of from March to uh, May. Um, neutering it didn't stop we were still doing it emergencies still went on but it it meant that more kittens have been born this year than than previous years and we're dealing with the aftermath and we, we're just barely keeping our heads above water unfortunately there's there's not as much money there's no tourists so we're having to pay for more food and there just isn't the homes for them and it's tragic really because we're going to end up with just more and more one more cat. So we've uh, had an early start this morning trapping um, cats on the island of Ibiza. It's very close to my heart because the island at the moment is really um, having serious problems with so many kittens born, born on the street. The whole process is 
quite uh, stressful. Um, the thing that keeps me going is knowing that that cat will, will now have a chance at a better life. Uh, each litter can be anything from four to six, even seven kittens. And if you do the maths, that means that very quickly situations get out of hand. We do the males and the females because when we do the males it stops them from fighting, stops them from roaming and stops them from sp spreading diseases. Females obviously we, uh, we want to do especially to stop them breeding. When they're under the anaesthetic having the operation we always cut the tip of one ear. This is so that we know which cats have been done then we don't keep trapping the same ones. You saw the other side is full of cats in the mountain. I am not rich. So maybe if I have buy food for 27, 28 cats, I cannot. Mm. You know this? Mm. This is for maximum 10 days. Maybe 180 for a month. 180 euros a month yeah. on food for the cats? No, I give food every day, I give food. Yeah. But I spend a lot of money and I have no money. Yeah, That's yeah. The problem. yeah. I'm a worker, man, I'm not a rich. My name is Michele, I'm Italian and uh, I live uh, here in Ibiza since uh, 2016. Uh, I started to uh, collaborate with uh, Care for Cats uh, in uh, 2017. Everyone, this is my zone in Cala Yundalm, more or less, and uh, we try to, to trap them. And when we trap the cats, we go to the vet when, where they have uh, surgery. And uh, the thing uh, we really need is uh, a place for uh, the kittens uh, to where they can stay and be tamed and then uh, be adopted because uh, the problem is that uh, when uh, we trap the kittens uh, then they, are, they go back to the free land and uh, they still be wild so if we, have, we, we can find a place uh, where they can stay and be tamed it will be the best thing for, uh, for us but most of, of all for them Okay, so this is what I want from you and the ladies want from you. We'll be putting links up for their own personal charity uh, for you to donate directly to them. Uh, obviously we have uh, our own um, fundraiser that we're going along and basically while we're showing this film and doing everything to promote this over the next couple of weeks, 50% of everything that goes into that uh, will be going back to the ladies as well. Um, we've got our own little fundraiser you'll see tomorrow uh, for a dinner. But if you know anyone that can help, if you've got contacts in the cat food business or pet supplies, or you've just got money you want to donate and help, you might come over here for a long period of time and maybe could do some fostering. There are so many things that you can get involved with to help out and make a small difference, especially this year when things are particularly tough.
that's the work of Care for Cats. Amazing stuff. It really is 24-7. And this summer, Head Candy are raising money for their charity. And we need your help. Our fundraising links are in the post below. So please, if you can, spare anything to help us. Thank you.